Hey guys, what's up? It's Scoundrel here, and today we are covering something different. We are looking at Tension Bow. Since update 3.8 reworked Tension Bow, it has kind of become the meta. A lot of people talking about what's the meta in terms of heroes, what's the meta in terms of items. Well, I can guarantee you that most people will tell you that Tension Bow is the new meta. I wanted to have a look at how Tension Bow actually works and how good it is in numbers as well. Now, one thing that you're going to notice here is that Tension Bow's cost has gone up. It has gone up to 2,700 from 2,150. That is a 550 gold increase, which is about 25% extra uh, on top of what it already was. So that's a 25% extra increase on the gold cost. The armor pierce went up to 35% and the passive got changed. Instead of being 240 flat damage, it is now 50 plus 125% of your bonus weapon power damage. So, as a first item, you're going to be getting 50 plus 125% of 45. The actual weapon power on Tension Bow did not change. So, as a first item, strictly, the straight-up burst damage is going to be less. There is no way of phrasing that in any other way. However, Tension Bow is now designed to scale. It is going to scale up the more and more weapon power you get, making Tension Bow a very solid late-game item. Now, to make the burst on the new Tension Bow better than the old Tension Bow, we'd have to get around 160 weapon power, and Tension Bow plus Sorrow Blade is 170 weapon power. So you can see that immediately mathematically the two item spike of tension bow is going to elevate tension bow to well above where it was previously in terms of damage output so tension bow is no longer that first item that you pick up to try and snowball the game with it is something that provides burst to a lot of bruisers as the game goes on and scales with the more weapon power you get so let's take a small mathematical example. We're going to assume that the opponent has 80 armor, and we're going to assume that you have 70 base weapon power. We're going to have a look at the burst of the old tension bow. 70 base weapon power plus 45 from tension bow plus the 240 burst is 355 damage. Then we take the 10% armor that you reduce the enemy eye, which gives them 72 armor, and we plug it into our formula 355 divided by 1 plus the armor value of 72 divided by 100, and that gives us a damage output of 206.4 on the burst versus someone with 80 armor. So that's the old tension bow burst. That's what you'd get just as tension bow is a first item, assuming that you have 70 base weapon power. That is a random value that I've taken, by the way. Um, not any particular hero, but we're just going to use 70 for the moment. Let's have a look at tension bow as a first item afterwards, maintaining the same armor and the same base weapon power. So remember, tension bow only takes your bonus weapon power. 125% of, which is going to give you 106.25, plus the 50, obviously, and that's going to give us a burst of 221.25. Now, you get extra armor pierce here. Remember, it's gone up to 35%, I believe, uh, which is going to give a 52 armor value, so you reduce that 80 down to 52, and you can see here that the burst is 145.6, roughly 60 or so less than Tension Bow as a first item. Now, Okay, you can look at that and you can say the burst is obviously strictly worse as a first item. Tension Bow is no longer going to give you that immediate massive burst damage. Very fair. I think uh, most people can assume that given the way that Tension Bow was reworked. But what about all of the hits that you get in in between the procs of Tension Bow? Remember, there is six seconds between that burst on Tension Bow. What about all the extra damage that you get in in that time? Let's assume that you attack once a second, you get six attacks in between the procs. 115 weapon power, it is the 70 base weapon power plus the 45 from Tension Bow. And we'll have a look at how that compares over the course of six attacks. Now, I mean, six attacks is probably pretty ambitious for early in the game, but we're just going to use it as a, as a base example. The old Tension Bow is going to give you 67 per hit versus 80 armor. The new Tension Bow is going to give you 76 per hit versus uh, the 80 armor as well. This is counting their difference in armor piercing. Over the course of six hits, you're going to get in 54 extra damage, which almost brings up the total damage dealt over the course of one proc and six hits to equal among these two particular items. Now remember, old Tension Bow was cheaper, 
so you'd be able to p probably pick it up maybe one to one and a half minutes before the new tension bow, which gives you a one and a one and a half one and a half minute window to exploit because that's what tension bow was good for. But given how fast paced Vainglory is, I mean, we just had the Vainglory um, All Stars. All the games were ending in roughly like 15 to 17 minutes. One and a half minutes is not a huge window to abuse. So unless you're absolutely certain that you can use that one and a half minute window, new tension bow just seems strictly better. So as a first item, it's only slightly worse now. It's only slightly worse. Really, it should be horrendously worse. And I think one of the best ways to rectify this is reduce the base weapon power on tension bow. Maybe put it down to 20 or 30. Um, reduce that overall so that the burst is lower and you do need to combo it with more items. You sacrifice burst, but you do gain consistent damage, which will only get better the more armor the enemy builds. 35% shred is insane. That is like... a a bone saw plus a few stacks of bone saw built into an item. In fact, tension bow kind of renders bone saw obsolete. If I'm honest, I thought bone saw was going to be really good, but the new tension bow kind of renders bone saw obsolete. So either you reduce the armor pierce, or you reduce the base damage on tension bow. I think is the only way to solve it. And because of this, tension bow plus sora blade is the new damage meta. This one-two combo is the the most insane damage that you're going to get from weapon power carry from just the two item spike and, and most weapon power carries can abuse this but the ones that abuse it really well are people like Ringo are people like Gwen because Ringo's um attack speed buff with 35% armor shred is great uh, but Gwen and Ringo in a great place Baron in a good place Kinetic doing really well any ranged weapon power carry that can use this uh, are really loving it as well as Arden weapon power Arden is loving this as well so, just for comparison before we uh, we end the video, because this is only going to be a short one to talk a little bit about Tension Bow. The old burst in Tension Bow is 240. If you get uh, Tension Blow plus Sorrow Blade, the new burst is 262.5, which means at a two-item spike, the new Tension Bow is strictly superior. The old two-item spike of Tension Blow plus Sorrow Blade is heavily outclassed for just 600 gold. 600 gold makes you infinitely better uh, with the new Tension Bow and Sorrow Blade spike. So, as you can see, Tension Bow is a good item, in probably in too strong of a position. It kind of does a little bit of everything too well, uh, and I think reducing the, the armor pierce or reducing the base weapon power, um, or even just making it like 100% if you're scaling, just hit one, hit one of those factors on Tension Bow and you'll help balance it a little bit better. But right now, it's almost just a better version of where it was previously.